Hello, bonnet heads. I am here today cradling my coffee like as if baby Carrie was just rescued from a well. I'm holding on to her real tight because this is the aftermath, the morning, morning, literal morning after the three-day 50th anniversary of Little House on the Prairie. I am here, of course, with my hashtag imaginary boyfriend, Dean Butler, live in the studio. I'm I know, here. first time ever. I'm so glad you're here in the space. I just feel the energy. I know, coming it's really I feel the love good. directly, yeah. Thank you, thank you. And I'm also here with uh, Allison Arngram, our lovely and very tired prairie bitch today. She she is <laughs> jet lagged. I'm not in bed. I know, I know. I hope your I hope the lower half of you is just pajamas. Please tell I, me. I have, I have sweats and sneakers on. Yes. So uh, I I just want to hear what like Adam. the the rundown of the the quick rundown of what you did between you know between now and where you were for the last you know, four or five days. So on Monday night, I landed at the LAX from Paris. I got in a little early, which was good because then we were actually able to eat. Um, and I was a bit early. Yeah. I pulled some clothes out, said <laughs> I need this good. tomorrow. And, um, and then I got up and did uh, KCAL and we did news and I did multiple interviews. Then I did uh, Good Morning America. And then Thursday was press day, which made me wonder what Tuesday and Wednesday were. Right. Because that's all. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then Friday, um, well, Thursday night, checked into a hotel room and brought all my stuff and unloaded. And then Friday morning, hit the ground, right, showed up. And I mean, they were already lining up like while we're unpacking. So what was it? Twelve thousand people? Yeah. Somewhere yeah. in that range. I, yeah. I heard. I, don't know. I heard that eighteen thousand tickets were sold. That's what I someone told me. Sign stuff, and I had bonnets and T-shirts and photos and books. Oh my! I, I did sell all my books. I sold all my books, like three crates. Um, then there were things. There were panels and photo ops, many of which were actually scheduled at the same time. Mm. And so there's a lot of running around. We had these golf carts. Okay, my favorite part of the weekend was the golf cart rides between <laughs> the autograph area and the two stages <laughs> and 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 the different places I had to go because. Um, it was like when I was in Maui, and the, my favorite part was driving the tractor to the main house. That was it. So the golf cart rides bounding over the hills in the park to get me well, to and various yeah, and when you're on It one was of those, insane. Yeah. It was insane. And, when you're, panels, and when you're I on the it, golf cart, especially with Karen Grassley, it literally was like riding with the queen. I mean, people just <laughs> waving and waving back. And by, I mean, it was insane. It was yeah. insane. Yeah. Well, and, and we are jo- so Allison. We are we have guests in the studio today, which we never have. Oh, so fantastic. Pamela, what tell tell everybody who's here? I am so so thrilled um, that Chris Chaika is here, who's my hey. uh, my my pal, my bestie. We are now officially bonded for life, sharing this experience together. Veterans of the town square tent. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, Chris was also the co moderator of all the panels. I think. You and I both did 14 panels each. 14 panels each. That's awesome. It's a so lot of panels. Work. It's a lot of panel. It's all the panels. There was a lot of talking. Yeah. But it was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> and um, Jen Brawler is also here, who's Dean's social media mogul. And also, she also was on one of the panels, which was my sort of maybe most favorite panel. Okay, Pamela, can I just say my favorite saying, part of the panels was the look on your face and Chris's face and uh, the mother's face because things would just go off the rails and out of control. <laughs> All of us actors were freaking out because it's the 50th anniversary. We're seeing people we hadn't seen in months, days, years, decades. And we were just overwhelmed by how many people. So yeah. people just started to open their mouths and saying stuff. <laughs> well, and then we turn around and your face is going to be like, ah, what is happening? What is happening? Uh, well, no, because I'm a fan as well as the moderator so I'm intently listening to these stories uh, like as if an audience member is listening to it also and I would just sort of go into a trance at a certain point and especially with Jonathan Gilbert which we'll talk about soon and as the weekend went on I think the cast members because you you all were up in the Civic Center signing photographs and talking to fans we were getting tired and you guys were getting tired, we and, were and as everyone got more tired, everyone got more punchy. 
<laughs> and the filters got more and more and more porous, <laughs> and the stories yeah, got funnier and funnier and funnier. And funnier. <laughs> so we've started to introduce Jen Brailer. Uh, Jen has also been to- been asked if she's my wife, uh, my daughter. <laughs> but we weren't going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Catherine. Oh no, Catherine, Catherine will be Sorry, no Catherine. Catherine. Catherine will be okay. Catherine. Catherine's, Catherine. Catherine's Catherine's very confident. So she does. But she it's should fun, be. It's, she's but amazing. It's, but it's but it's. It's you do look like his daughter. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, a, no, it's a good it's a good pairing at in a table and, and Jen, so I was hearing about your your panel experience and understanding that you just it was amazing and and I know you're all gonna talk about that more because I wasn't there. But um, you you made a nice contribution this yeah, weekend. Really Thank did. Thank you so much. It was a joy. Thank you so much for having me. I was nervous, obviously. This is not my exact audience of what I normally do. My normal audience is just very Christian lifestyle. So I'm normally talking to a bunch of Christians. And so Little House is my audience, but also it's not. And right. so it's very, it, it's, it's just spectrum, a spectrum, that audience. Yes, mm-hmm. and, it, and it was such a joy because the way people reacted, people even coming up to our table while we were there to see you, I had so many people coming up in tears yeah. and just saying thank you so much for just sharing your story, and it resonated with me so much. But no, my favorite question is, are you Dean's daughter? <laughs> and and I guess it's the blonde hair and the blue eyes, but I sure. talked to Catherine and she said that I'm an adopted butler now. Yeah, oh, okay. And that I, she will be my mom and Dean can be my dad. So there, you go. there we go, adopted family. So I'm an adopted butler, but I'm not related by blood. <laughs> and, Even though we are And she's blood. amazing social media. <laughs> I Thank tell you, you Jen has been spectacular. I think so much of, I mean, on, on a personal level, so much of people's reaction to me through the weekend was so based on all the content that Jen has been creating for the last six months yeah. that's just been mm-hmm. amazing, promoting the event, leading people to it, showing people the steps along the way. It, it's it's uh, You've done a spectacular job. Thank Let you. Let me say it here for our, all of our podcast audience. You're amazing, and I'm, I'm just so pleased that we're able to do Thank this you, together. Dean. Well, it was overwhelming that so many people came up and said, I found out about this event because of Dean's social media. Yeah, man. Like his TikTok, his Facebook, his Instagram. And that was like, well, that's great because, man, we've been working really hard on it for the last six months to get you right. where you some are. Num- some numbers, right. So I'm just right. very, very thankful for the turnout that we had mm-hmm. and the way that it went. So, so thank you so much, Dean. You're so welcome. So, all right. I, I want, there was a highlight on the panel stage. Uh, Pam, Pamela, and I'm sorry, I did it. You I corrected it. it, though. I, it. So I know, I know. I'm never to call <laughs> her Pam. She's not Pam, she's Pamela. And Allison, uh, you two had an incredible experience with your long departed, uh, long invisible TV brother. You got to talk about that because I think that was a okay, huge well, highlight. I mean, you should depart it. it was like having someone you love come back. From the dead. Yeah. I'm sorry. I hadn't seen him or spoke, spoken to him, seen him. I, t- I had had a letter with I hadn't seen him since 1983. Wow. 83. Yeah. And I did write to him when my book was coming out in 2010. And he wrote back a beautiful letter. So I knew he was alive and kicking. Right. And that unlike Willie, his grammar and spelling had dramatically <laughs> improved. Um, really good. I mean, you know, you get letters from people and you go, oh, this person can write. Um, and then I would get reports from Melissa. And then in the last couple of years, Melissa said, hey, you know, Jonathan and I are like totally like freaking frack back at it talking again. I'm like, get out. So I was like, this is great. This is great. This is great. And they said, no, I think he's going to come to the 50th. I said, oh, he's not going to come. I guess that's going to be thousands of people. Ah, he's like really bright, but he's not going to. And I'll be pay me blue and call me Mary. Um, He was there. He showed up. OK, he showed up. Like made an entrance. Okay, first of all, he, he milked did. Yes, this he thing. did make an entrance. <laughs> no photos on me. Still, still, the fake photos of. As I said, we have to have a support group for all the men who've been identified as Jonathan Gilbert. No, we'll talk here. about. We'll that. talk about. We'll, we'll talk yeah, about his that. entrance so, on the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Instagram. He's in Willie, and then finally, and then we're doing the group photo, and whoosh, he appears in a puff of smoke in a suit, and, a th- and we're like, ah, 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 ah. and everyone loses their mind. <laughs> Melissa's crying, and I'm crying, and 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 then it just went nuts from there, and then. He's got the man bun thing and then decides yeah. to let down his hair. Causing large numbers of women to scream. There was swooning. Insane. <laughs> no, it was a moment. It was a moment. Well, and 
And oh, so I'll look at these. So we're seeing some pictures now. This was after the festival ended yesterday. Everyone had gone home, and they decided to do a yeah. costume change. In fact, as I was leaving the center, we Jonathan and I passed each other, and he was in full willy drag. And I was like, bye, Jonathan. <laughs> and he was like, bye. Oh, I, was, I want to talk to you, Pamela. But OK, yeah. I just have to do a thing. And I was like, OK. And I left, and I was like, yeah. He was just dressed up as Willie. We were leaving. <laughs> Bob and I were in the car. We loved the car. And then they said, oh, Olin and the guys are by the sets. That there was something like they were going to have. And I said, look, we're not going to dinner. We're too tired. Blah, blah. We go back into the set area and they go, Jonathan's changing. And I said, look, it's into what? What? <laughs> He's changing. Not on the inside. <laughs> He's changing on the outside. And he comes out in the full Willie gear. I mean, everything. The socks, the whole thing, and the hair. And flies. <laughs> I mean, it's a perfect recreation <laughs> and he starts playing yeah. with a slingshot and i'm like what is he doing what is he doing and i go fine that's it bob bob get the wig get the wig and then i don't know what happened i don't know what happened it was Set up the body. baby it's bob get the wig get the bob wig. get the wig that's a great, that's a great line <laughs> well let's should we tell how it started well the panel with yeah. with jonathan so allison you and i had been on the outdoor stage where it was it was a trifle windy it's trifle windy <laughs> and a little cold um and then Allison got bundled off in the golf cart and went away back up to went the civic to center the now you go back to the room and, and there had the, been the, 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 there had room. been discussions the schedule had been shifting and it wasn't entirely clear that Jonathan mm-hmm. was going to be doing the panel right. or that the panel may have moved and we were being very adaptable people <laughs> and even on Friday and, it was yeah, not clear right. whether he was actually going to show up or For, not right. everything was still in the right. air so we didn't I, know he was doing a panel we didn't yeah. know if he was going to go through no. we didn't know what time the panel no. was right. everything no. had changed 15 times yes. panel was on one tent in one tent which was about a quarter mile away and she was preparing to possibly do a panel with Allison and Jonathan or maybe just Allison right nobody was no quite sure what was happening right I was at the outdoor stage, which was about a quarter mile away, <laughs> um, you know, and waiting to go on stage with Melissa Gilbert and right. do and have an interview with Melissa Gilbert on the outdoor stage. I'm preparing like I see Melissa coming down the hill in the golf cart and my cell phone rings and I look and it's Allison Arngrim calling me. And I was like, well, this is this is what's happening. So I answer the phone and Allison's like, what is going on? And I was like, <laughs> Not sure what is going on with you. <laughs> She's like, Where's Jonathan? And I was like, and she's like, where am I supposed to be? And I was like, I think you're supposed to be doing a panel. <laughs> this and she's is the like, whole weekend, everyone's, by the way. Yes. Everyone's telling me to find Jonathan. Jonathan <laughs> is not here. <laughs> right. I, I, had just, I like just walked in the door, and then they're saying, no, you're supposed to be another panel. I just got back from a panel. What do you mean I'm going to a panel? And then they said, go get Jonathan. I go, I can't go get Jonathan. He's not <laughs> He's here. not here. And the man looks around. I go, I can't bring him. And why would I? Br- I can't bring him. He's not here. He walked over. He didn't take a golf cart. And then I get, he's here on stage, well, come now. Well, really. so this is what happened. Well, so. before, before you get to that, yeah, yeah. so I, Melissa is getting off the golf cart. <laughs> And Allison's like, what am I supposed to do? And I was like, Allison, I got Melissa here. I can't talk to you anymore. I was like, I think you should go to the tent. Uh, good luck. And I hung up and Melissa and I went on the stage. And Bob, I, get the Bob, get the wig. Bob, get the wig. <laughs> so what's happening in my world is that, you know, behind the big tent, there's sort of a green room tent where we're hanging out before we go onto the stage. And before we go onto the stage, Kevin comes on. Kevin, to a, who let's just stop for a second. Yes. Kevin was our producer our guy. Wrangler. Kevin, at, Tyson. Kevin, Kevin Tyson. Kevin Tyson at the Town Square tent who kept Pamela and I sane, sane. kept the, the cast members sane, and really was like the ringmaster yes. of the circus for yes. three days and did an incredible, incredible job. Yes, yes he did. Uh, and, and so before each panel, Kevin would go on stage, say who he is, give sort of the house rules, and then introduce me or Chris, whoever was moderating, and the cast members who were coming on. And then we enter the stage. I'm waiting back in the tent. I am alone. There is no Jonathan. There is no Allison. And I'm just waiting back there. And there there. are a thousand people in in the the tent tent and another thousand people ringing the tent. Right. (laughs) So it's wild. The next thing we hear is just the crowd erupting 
in cheers and apl- just uproarious applause and cheering. And we're going, what's what's going on? And the next thing I know, someone's going, Jonathan's on the stage. Jonathan's on the stage. He just got up what, and went on the stage. He just walked on? He just he walked, just walked down, down and got on the stage. And, and sat <laughs> down in the chair in the middle of the stage. So he's just sitting there no, by himself? Yes. Did he talk no. into the microphone or nope. anything? <laughs> Nothing. He, he just sat there. He just got, and we were like, uh, I guess I have to go now on the stage. So, <laughs> so then we sort of sloppily get, get on there. And then I say to him, like, you know, Allison's not here yet, but we can get started. And he was like, no, I want to wait. I want to wait for Allison. I was like, yeah. oh, cool, cool. So now we're in front of 2,000 people and he doesn't want to start talking yet. And as far as we know, Allison is sitting in, in the Civic Center because she doesn't know that she is supposed to be in the tent. So now I'm sitting... And I'm looking for Jonathan. Right, right. So now I'm sitting on stage with Jonathan Gilbert. Not who, talking. Who doesn't want to talk yet. I, I just want to say, how perfect is that That's what Jonathan. Allison was saying. I mean, uh, that whole approach is so perfect for Jonathan. So, Allison, you need to talk about that a little bit. I mean, it's on the, brand. It is on brand. Yeah. I'm sorry. Jonathan Gilbert, when he was a tiny child, was a prankster and brilliant. I mean, a genius. He's always, he's absolutely brilliant. Okay, I knew he was a genius as a child. I knew he was not like other people as a child. <laughs> and I knew that he liked to mess with them. But he's dead. <laughs> and he's down there again. Um, so this was totally on brand. It wasn't like, wow, that's so unusual. Is Jonathan doing that? We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When the Instagram thing, I went, yeah, that's him, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I'm looking for him, and then it's like, he's here, he's here, he's on stage. What? Because I said, I'm not going to a thing if he's done. And so Mom, then, get the wig. It's just, get, the, get the wig. It's the and emergency then the world's call. fastest golf cart ride, <laughs> hanging on for dear life to try to get there. And then I start, as soon as they see the golf cart, they start chanting. <laughs> They're ch- well, first they were chanting, Willie, 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 and then it turned into Nellie, because they saw her golf cart start coming down the hill, <laughs> and it turned into this I rock concert. Out, this insanity, pandemonium, pandemonium. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. You know, I was sort of vamping before she got there, but um, I, I watched your totally uncomfortable conversation where you're trying to get Jonathan to talk, and I'm not there. That it was, was okay. Hilarious. I got a few laughs, and that was that was the important part to just keeping me. And then I made a bit out of waiting for you, so that was funny. Um, but I was glad you arrived when you arrived. Certainly. <laughs> All right, so before we go on with this, I realize we've been remiss by not by not actually introducing the show. So before we go <laughs> oh, any farther, sure. let's just sure. say from the from the from the studios of UBN Go in, in Burbank, Burbank, California, California. visit simivalley.com presents a special event podcast. This is the Little, Little House, House 50, 50 for 50. 50. Woo woo. I know, soothing tone. If only we'd heard this song this weekend. I know. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> I know. I think we heard the theme song about eight eight hundred times. Billion times in my just, ears. Yeah, in, incredible <laughs> and so moving to to hear people's response to it. I mean, I don't know if we've really painted the picture. You know, a lot of people who are listening today were were probably there because clearly people who came to the event are listeners to the podcast. But I, if we could all confirm there. just this sea of humanity yeah. was around us all three days, despite the rain, yeah. despite the long Lining lines. Lining up at despite, 730 in the morning yeah. in full it was prairie just drag. An incredible. Yeah. How did you describe prairie it? Prairie drag. Oh, I, I heard someone in line <laughs> on Friday. I mean, the line on Friday morning was. Starting it at was, 730. It was bigger than the Disneyland huge. line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I heard someone say, what is this? Six Flags Over Little House? <laughs> and I was like, apparently, it is Six Flags Over Little House. <laughs> That's the name, Six Flags Over Little House. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a remarkable scene. And for those of us who had spent the time, so much time, preparing this to get it ready to go. And it's sort of that, it's that uh, field of dreams thing. If you build it, they will come. You, know, mm-hmm. you build it, you mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. don't. I mean, yes, the tickets have been sold, but you really don't know if they're going to come. Right. And then we walk out of this tent, Allison, our first panel, we walk out of the tent and looking literally, it was half a mile down the road, this lineup of people. It was just the most moving and, thing to and see. Love. It was love. Love. I, I love. gotta give props Everywhere. to one of the volunteers, Mary, and she she works at Disney World in her real life. And we were having a time of it because there's only so much space in that building. We got 
literally everyone from the show is there. And so Dean's line is backing up this way, like straight to Jonathan's table. And then Jonathan Melissa lines going, that's my line. And we're, oh my God, oh my God, what are we going to do? What are we gonna, people are bumping into each other. And they're all being really nice. Everyone's being like insanely polite. Yeah. Oh, hi. <laughs> but we're like, this is getting a little. And then this woman walks up and goes, I work at Disney World. I let me show you how this is done. And she put tape on the floor and she made a line that wound around That's, like they were going yeah, to the bottom. That's great. That helped. And she <laughs> said this did, did th- and that line and it was brilliant. And she'd go, how many in your party? Before she'd let them in the line. Three was a party of three, party of two, party of three, party of two. And she made, and oh that, God, she made the train run her. on time. And that, that thing worked. We were moving them in and out of there. It was amazing. Wait, can we get back to Jonathan for a second? Yes, yeah, back to Jonathan. Just for a second. We have a special guest coming I just want to, I just want to sort of wrap up the, oh. The, there, there he is. He is. Um, at, so hair know, down. You got to tell he the hair. He took his hair down, yeah, and yeah, yeah. It, the, it, the crowd went wild. But you know, the buildup for seeing him was so intense, especially that week before the festival started, as I call it. Hashtag Gilbert Gate 2024. Um, <laughs> because, you know, he was the man of mystery and people kept posting pictures of what he looked like. And on the website, they posted a picture of Jonathan Gilbert. It and wasn't Jonathan still, Gilbert. Well, no, even when it was his picture, they his still Instagram didn't picture, believe it. that's not him. I know. And it's like, oh. So it was this huge buildup. So it wasn't him. It wasn't him. I just want to sum up the experience by saying he was more than happy to share his experiences. He was more than happy to be there. I think he was very appreciative of everything. Mm-hmm. I don't think he realized how loved he was. Yeah. And I kept telling him, do you know, do you understand what it, it means that you're here? You are so loved. Mm-hmm. And I just want to say how the whole thing ended, which was, you know, I wasn't going to breach the subject at all of Jonathan Gilbert, where have you been for the past 30 years? It just, that's not my business. I wasn't going to go there. Right. It's fine. And at the end of every panel, there were questions, Q&As for the audience that they were allowed to write on little cards. And the last question on the card was, Jonathan, where have you been? We love you. And I thought, oh, boy, well, at least it wasn't coming from me, right? It's an audience member. It's not me asking. So I went ahead and I asked it. And he he really took a beat and he said, you know, I've been traveling. I've traveled the world. I've studied under great spiritual masters. I've been on a spiritual journey for I was 20 briefly years. a stockbroker in New York. So that rumor was, was like, true. Aha! That rumor was true. <laughs> that was a rumor going around. I was a st- briefly a stock stockbroker in New York. He said, but I for 30 years, I've been trying to figure out how to live. And what I didn't realize was I never felt more alive than when I was with this cast on Little House on the Prairie. And what I learned this weekend, I know, Allison, and what I learned this weekend is that I've come home. And it took the breath away. I know, I know. It took the breath away from everyone. And uh, I was watching Allison the whole time. He was saying that. And like I said, I've been friends with Allison for over eight years now. And I've ne- she does not cry. She does not cry. And she just welled up with tears. And then, of course, made a comic bit out of it at the end, which was brilliant. But, but I- it was an incredibly moving, extraordinary moment. And that last moment was just like you felt the heavens part and the beam come down. And I have to it say, was incredible. you know, when when one of the things a lot of people remember about Little House is tears and laughter through tears. Yeah. And I I I think almost every panel that the folks I was speaking to, there was a tear here or there for most of the panelists. There were a couple of times where there I was in tears. I cried so because much because there was so day. much emotion and there was so much um nostalgia um, and people just felt so good about seeing each other and the fans seeing the cast. Um, it was just it was just incredible. Um, the love and the emotion yeah. between the audience and the folks who were on stage yeah. with us. Yeah. Very surreal. So I when, cried so much. This way. OK, the other big cry jag I had, you know, seeing John and this, I cried this, I cried this. I went to sign a photo. It's a photo I've signed a million times. It's a cute picture of me and Jonathan, Nellie and Willie in front of the mercantile. I signed this picture like a million times. I've had it for years. And I go to sign it. And I said, oh, I have to leave room for Jonathan to sign it. Oh, wow. And then proceeded to burst into yeah. tears. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, talking about talking about tears and emotion, all of us were there this weekend to honor the memory of, of Michael Landon, who there was there is no little house on the prairie without Michael Landon. The idea was developed by Ed Friendly and together pitched by Michael and Ed Friendly at NBC. But it was Michael's vision 
and we all know this, it was Michael's vision that drove the show forward for 10 years. One of the most important things to all of us as we were putting this, this, this project together was to make sure or to, to ensure that Michael's children were aware of what we were doing and that they could be there and see the love and the affection, the devotion that goes on for their father, not only among the cast, but a sampling of the love and affection that exists in the public sphere for their father. Across it, the planet Earth. It's <laughs> huge. It's huge. So uh, this morning, as I was dragging myself out of bed, <laughs> at, after getting to bed at it 10, hurts, you, you know, guys. At 10, it hurts. You know, at 10 or after all day, I just, I just, I, I pinged Mike Jr. and just said, would you and Leslie come on? the podcast just for a few minutes to talk about your reactions to what you saw this weekend and i'm so grateful that that uh, that mike and leslie are here with us now guys welcome and uh, thank you so much for for being with us um I, I just what did you feel after you what did you feel after being with us over the weekend what was it for you mm. Start. Yeah, oh, heavy. Well, <laughs> oh gosh! I can tell you this much: there's there's no more tears left in me. They were they were all spent over the weekend, guys. Um, the outpouring of love for our father for the show was um, no words. I mean, it was just it was incredible. Yeah, it's one of the most memorable experiences of my life by far. Definitely. I we were so excited about this event and and leading up to it and obviously seeing all familiar faces. But what really took us by surprise was um, the stories that we got to hear from people. And I happened to have a Kleenex in my bag on the first day. I didn't. <laughs> you came more prepared than I did. The first day, I had so much Kleenex for the next couple of days because yeah. Mike and I were just blown away. Um, and honestly, even though it was incredible to see the sets, the recreated sets, et cetera, um, but it was seeing the fans mm -hmm. and hearing their mm -hmm. stories that was the most moving for us. Anything that anything that you can share that you that is particularly memorable about what you heard from anybody? Oh, sure. Oh my gosh, yeah. Well, a lot of them were, you know, the surrogate father story mm. coming from, you know, dysfunctional families, uh, absentee dads, where Pa Ingalls was there for them. That was their father or the Ingalls family in general mm -hmm. being their family and their their ideal, what they what they so desired in life. And then using that, using the lessons and the love that was created in the series as a launching pad for their for their families mm. yes that they create in the future so yeah the impact and it was globally too one other quick story to share which is we met this lovely lady from turkey and yeah this was this was amazing it was the only series that the turkish government allowed to wow. be aired in turkey and um you know she was saying as she was growing up, they always had this negative sense of the U.S. and that they were, you know, the enemy, if you will. And watching this show made them realize that why is that? This, this, their morals, their love for each other. This is what we 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 want to embrace the faith aspects of it. So it impacted her and all the children that she knew and the families that she knew. And she said, had the cast of Little House showed up in Turkey, <laughs> they would have been showered with love. Wow. Because they were all so moved by what they had what they witnessed and what they what they experienced through the show. And the, the other uh takeaway too for 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 us, um, obviously it, it was wonderful to show our kids Little House mm -hmm. and to see their grandpa, to see, hear his voice. Obviously, they never got to meet him. But having so many families come up to us and talk about their children and then their grandchildren also watching, it really hit us how generational Little House has been. And and, I, and it will continue. I Did you see that. all those all those little girls in their prairie garb? Oh, and, gosh, yeah. I mean, I was so moved by that too, of knowing that 
these young kids are now watching the show too. It's just going to keep going yeah. and going and going. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so so sweet. Well, you you know your your father said to me years ago, and he said it to lots of people that people would be watching Little House long after we were all gone. And when he said it to me at the age of twenty five, I it felt a little a little like hyperbole. You know, I just at, at sure. near twenty five, you just don't think that's possible. You're going to live forever. You're never going to be gone. At sixty eight, it you know it be, feels very clear mm. that Little House has this life as long as as long as entities are willing to invest in keeping it up to date technologically it, it it has the ability to go on and on and on because of the universality of the message that the, that the program yeah. offers yeah. so were Definitely. people just recognizing you and coming up to you to tell you their stories so yeah when actually the it was kind of fun because obviously it was such a busy busy weekend and different places that we wanted to be but on the day that we got to have our kids and our spouses and Shauna was there with her daughter, Olivia. And um, at one point the kids just kind of went walking and the kids even had people coming up to them oh, wow. and with tears oh. sharing their stories. And so it really blew them away. Like they obviously heard a lot about their grandpa, but to really see and feel the emotions that people had for their grandfather and for the show, and the impact of the show, it was it. They they just keep talking about it. They just can't they can't wrap their head around it. Actually, when you when you think back to the years you spent with your father as he's creating this, how would you encapsulate what his mission was with with what he created and what we all were a part of? And and I'm just curious how you got it, what it felt like to you. I, the first thing that pops in my head, um, I think his mission was to bring families together, that they could have an hour where they sit together and they feel all the emotions and uh, talk about it. Um, I think it was important for him to have family television that really meant something mm. to everybody. You could oh, yeah, that. absolutely. I mean, he grew up with a dis dysfunctional family. And so, you know, it was, it, he wanted to create the ideal. He wanted to point all of us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we're gonna falter, we're gonna come short of the mark, but it, it, was, it, was, it was, you know, it was due north, it was true north yeah. for families. Yeah. You know, the other big highlight, honestly, for me, was obviously experiencing this with Mike, um, the whole weekend mm -hmm. but so many people would turn to my brother and talk about their love for when calls the heart and love comes softly mm -hmm. and to see you know the legacy mm -hmm. of beautiful family television through mike and having people say to him how much they yeah. love his work was such yeah. a gift also I, for us i watched this i've just seen little clips some clips of your work Michael and I, I feel like when I was watching some of the some just segments of things that you had directed, it felt so influenced by the way your father shoot angles, tempo, you know, yeah. it, it just really felt, you know, it felt very in sync as I watched these things. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's high praise. <laughs> so <laughs> well, thank you, you learned from, you know, the master. <laughs> yeah, I did. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, uh, I before we, I just, we, I want to just say we, we've been supported so beautifully by uh, so many different companies who've stepped in with us, particularly the city of Simi Valley. You know, this this event would not have happened without the support of the Simi Valley Chamber of Commerce, who just stepped into the event huge. Without Friendly Family Productions, who who sanctioned the event and said yes let's do this and honor the program and honor michael and honor everything that was done and then there were other companies that stepped in too, like cozy tv and uh rodex and uh, modern prairie obviously our friend melissa was very involved with her company price board the city of simi valley adventist health simi valley um so many groups helped make this work and uh this was a huge huge team effort on you know, you saw this, it, when you're trying to lasso something like this, you know, there were so many things on the table that we wanted to do. And to be able to 
load this thing up and then it just sort of explodes out yeah. and it drops in and you just don't know how it's going to work. And Leslie and Michael, did you, did you know it was going to be as big as it was? Oh, gosh, no. Oh, you didn't. <laughs> oh, wow. No, when we, the day we pulled up on Friday morning, I was waiting to see some sort of line and activity. Yeah. And then it was like, wait, where does the line? What? what? Yeah. <laughs> There's no end to the line. Yeah. Then you started you seeing the saying, scope. You kept saying, can you believe this? I mean, look at this. Yeah. This is this is unbelievable. I mean, yeah. we had no idea. It was breathtaking. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm just curious. You know, your father and Kent McRae were an incredible team. I Throughout the weekend, I'm invoking them both constantly. I just wonder... As you knew them, you obviously knew them both. Your father obviously can't uh, so well. What do you think they would have thought as they saw people coming together in this effort to honor them and the work that they they did together? <laughs> I mean, it would blow their minds, I would assume, like mm -hmm. everybody else's. I mean, I don't think anybody anticipated that completely. I mean, you... You knew there was a love for the show, but for people to sacrifice um, their time, travel, expenses. Yeah. From over 20 countries. From Exactly, yeah. from over 20 was... countries. Um, from <laughs> rain or shine, here they are uh, just wanting to share their love of the show with others and, and the cast and the crew. Um, it was, I mean, again, I mean, it was just... It's just the mo one of the most emotional experiences of my life. Mm. I, I honestly wish someone had just been standing behind us with with a, a phone just to record everything because there were so many incredible stories. And we're just trying to take it all in. It was, I just want to savor each mm. thing that people said to us, yeah. truly. We, one of the things that you did not get to do this weekend because we had rain on Saturday was to go to Big Sky Ranch. And uh, I just wanted to assure you both that the tours are going to continue at Big Sky. And Big Sky Ranch is going to take that wow. over with the city of Simi Valley. It's amazing. And those tours are going to continue to run, not not on an hourly basis, but on a monthly basis, there will be, I think, the way they're thinking about it, there will be tours. So we'll, we will definitely get you and your family up there so that they can see. You obviously know the place very well. But it's just, it's pretty cool to see these these facades of these locations that we all knew and loved so well back in the spots where they actually existed all those right. years ago. I, I think there's there's just been a wonder, I don't know, all of us have been there with people and I've seen the reaction in people's eyes and the, just the, the excitement of looking at these things that they could only imagine or watch on television, but to see a version of it in front of them was just, it was really incredibly gratifying to see that. I, I, I know you're gonna, when you get up there and are able to share it with your children and grandchildren, they're, they're gonna really love it. I, I hope you're able to do that soon. Thrilled to hear this, Dean, thank you. And I just also wanted to tell the two of you that, you know, one of the panels that we did was um, Little House is a Safe Space, and it sort of featured people who have had trauma in their lives and for me you know everyone asks like why does little house keep going why is this you know and you can answer oh it's love and it's family values and that's all true but in my opinion i think that it's enduring because it's healing it heals a lot of people and you talk to um people in a lot of trauma healing you know circuits and they use little house as a, a healing mechanism it's a it's a real thing and um i just hope that you guys know that as well that it's 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 bigger than just we loved the show family oh, values yeah. it's it's so much bigger than that it became very apparent over the weekend <laughs> oh good that's great that's great yeah, definitely yeah. And we were also so appreciative that the Pancreatic Cancer Network was yes. there in honor of our dad and PanCan was there all three days. And I really hope everybody got to stop by and they're doing a big team walk and they're actually calling it Team Little House. That's and great. 
hopefully we'll get a, a nice response throughout. Well, I can tell you I've had over the weekend a half a dozen, a dozen or more. My, my team, my little section of the team is growing. So uh, yeah, people are yeah people are signing up and and making donations. I think we're all going to be uh, ma- sending out lots of messages about about PanCan during the next month before this we event. Really so it's coming. It's a month from tomorrow. So the event is a month from tomorrow. So we have some time to uh, to so generate April, interest and excitement. April twenty. April twenty seventh. April twenty seventh. April twenty seventh. Yes. Thank yes. you, guys. That means a lot yeah, to we appreciate the whole that. Landon family. For One that. line that we quoted okay. in the town square tent a lot over the course of the weekend, um, and you all may remember it, is in the the last scene of the last farewell. Reverend Alden says, "Walnut Grove did not die in vain," and it sure didn't. Sure did. It goes That's on and on. Uh, Mike and Leslie, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you so much yeah, for being yeah. here. Thank what you an for honor. Us. So good to see you guys. Well, thank it was lovely seeing me. both of you this weekend. So it was just so great. And uh, thank you, thank you for coming and, and seeing all this effort that was gone into this. So it, uh, we're just thrilled. We'll, we'll never forget it. Never, we were very blessed by it all. Thank you guys thank so you. much. Well, we'll we'll see you soon, and you've got a Surrey coming your way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you've got a Surrey, yeah. coming, so we're going to figure yeah. out how that's going to happen. Yeah, a lot of great memories. So <laughs> yeah. thank you. So Very fun. good. All right, you guys, enjoy your day, and uh, thank you. we'll speak. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye now. Bye. Wow, amazing. Uh, just wow, wow, wow. Wonderful, right. um, Allison. You were, you know. You, you you were quiet through all that. I know because I'm just so amazed. I mean, uh, we've never seen Allison actually speechless what? before. Oh this weekend God. was what? a first. If this is mind blowing, if this weekend blew all our little brains out yeah. of our heads, yeah. what on earth did this have to be like for them? I know. What yeah. on earth was yeah. this like for yeah. Michael Landon's children? Yeah, that I know. It's very years exciting. Greater. People would be carrying on like this. It's crazy enough for us. How on? I, I I don't know how they're even processing this. I don't know how I'm processing this, and I can't imagine how I would process this if Michael Landon was my dad. Well, and Chris, you were on that final panel that mm-hmm. closed the whole show. Will you talk about that experience? I mean, it was it was Michael and uh, Leslie, and they were just you know again just stunned by the outpouring of appreciation and gratitude. And how much people loved the show. And, you know, I think, again, you know, people from all over the planet Earth were there this weekend and just, you know, showing that this this is a TV show, but it's impacted people right. far beyond, you know, the Rockford Files. <laughs> right. um, you know, There's it, no it, Walton's 50th it, anniversary. Three day oh, Walton. no, there, was, <laughs> there was no the Waltons are our friends. Walton we love the Waltons. I don't think I, so. I don't think it was quite this <laughs> <laughs> we love the wall. That was a shot the across the bow. The street fight. Yeah. Street fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's not. No. Let's not get into it. Right, we can say on the wall. We can say there was there was no there was no three day multinational Chico and the Man, right. which which also yeah. premiered in 1974. Okay. It's not happening. All right, all right, very good. Chico Sorry, and the Man Chris, Con. Go on. Go on with the panel. So I, I think that that was it. It was just it, it, they the Landons were so appreciative. And the fans were so appreciative, yeah. and it was just a great. It was a great thing to see. Also, the, home, the show, the books, the land. I want. Leslie came to me with Little House on the Prairie books to autograph for the land and now next generation children wow. who wow. are reading the Little House books, and I'm then autographing them. And I was like, brain. And it all goes back. It all goes back to a little girl born in Wisconsin in 1867. Yeah. Jed, you started to say something. I was just going to say that I was with Dean and the Landon children when he showed them the interior sets oh, wow. for the first time. And Leslie's reaction was a very emotional one. And it was yeah. so sweet. And there were fans were all around watching oh, wow. their reaction. Wow. And them seeing their dad's golf cart being restored and just talking to Olin about it and the tears and the emotion. And and for me, it was huge because I had never met them. So as a, I'm a fan myself and watching their reaction and Leslie looking at Mike and saying, Mike, look at dad. 
look at dad was just such like pulling on all the heartstrings and I had posted to Dean's channel a little snippet of their reaction but it was just so beautiful to see all of the hard work because it it like little house didn't die walnut grove didn't die in vain you know not at all it's it's still living on walnut grove is slowly taking over the planet (laughs) it is i i really feel like dean and i were talking about this i feel like this momentum that is coming from this event is just going to turn into something else i don't i feel like this is almost just the beginning of something else i really do so that's all i was going to say well it's certainly going to be a wonderful year and, and we're going to talk more in our in our next show yeah about our reactions to this but right now we are we are and blowing more through time talk, and more people and talk. chris is racing for an airplane before we go i just need to say simi valley california invites you to see the place where it all began this March, last weekend, the Little House on the Very 50th Anniversary was part of that. Discover our stories from presidents to pioneers, visit iconic locations like the Reagan Library, and more. Make your own memories at visitsimivalley.com. And we also want to thank some of our other sponsors, Alexander GMC of Simi Valley, Golden State Water Company, Marketing Scape, Strathern Historical Society, uh, WM, formerly Waste Management, and Vista at Simi Valley Assisted living and that's just there are so many more that stepped in at the very end I, i'm expecting a big list of additional companies that supported us yeah, for our for future podcasts but uh thank you pamela you need to take us out so we can do we can do wings here <laughs> thanks for joining us everybody and we'll be back with next week with another episode we're, we're still going to be talking about this our experiences people places panels all that jazz so come back next week we'll see ya Airplane arms, airplane arms. Oh look, it's four, it's all of us doing airplane <laughs> arms this time. <laughs> well, we're in sync, Chris. And we were there where it all happened. <laughs> <laughs>